Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a preview for the Sony RX100 Mark 7. I can't even believe I'm saying that, but yes, we're up to the seventh generation of RX100. And you may have already noticed, this is my little RX family. I've got the RX1, one of my favorite cameras. I'm hoping this will get an update to a third gen. And then I've got the RX10 Mark III and Mark IV, arguably the best bridge cameras ever made. And of course, the RX100 Mark VI and Mark V right here. So the RX100 that got announced today is going to be priced at $1,200 US, just like the RX100 Mark VI, but it has some key improvements. And even though that's a lot of coin for a point-and-shoot camera with a one-inch sensor, uh, I still believe it has a place in the market. In fact, the Mark VI has proven that because this has done very well for Sony. It's my favorite uh, pocketable camera, kind of like every RX100 before it. And each step that Sony makes uh, in terms of the generational upgrades, I think they make wise moves. And the RX100 Mark VII is not an exception at all. Uh, so we have a new one-inch stacked uh, sensor that is going to give us, believe it or not, A9-like performance. We're talking about uh, 20 frames per second, no blackout. Uh, they've added a microphone jack, which I know a lot of you have been waiting for. That has never been a huge gripe for me. Uh, I both understood why everyone would want one and also understood why it wasn't there on such a compact camera like this. I mean, after all, when you're looking at size, if you want to keep it pocketable, then you have to make certain concessions. And I think that's what it's always been about. Uh, beyond that uh, is the autofocus system. Not only do we have the A9 in terms of still performance, but we have the A9 uh, and A6400 uh, competency when it comes to real-time tracking. And this is where it's huge because uh, with the brand new RX100 uh, Mark VII, we have no cap on video recording. So essentially until you run out of battery or the camera overheats, which I think is huge. I mean, that to me, uh, coupled with the A9-like performance is already a very good reason to consider uh, the Mark VII. Uh, in terms of the actual autofocus points, the bump up there, we've gone from 399 uh, or excuse me, not 399, 315 phase detection up to 357. So here we had 315. I was thinking of the RX1 Mark II, which again, I'm waiting for Mark III for a reason. I want 4K internal. But with the Mark VII moving from the Mark VI, we go from 315 points of phase detection up to 357. Now that may not seem like a huge boost and numerically it's not, but uh, in terms of its calculations per second, I mean, Sony is bragging about 60 calculations per second. Uh, and that 20 frames per second isn't just 20 frames per second. It's going to be accurate. And that's a key because Sony for years has been bragging about the autofocus performance, basically, of these two cameras, these three. I won't include the RX10 Mark III or the RX1. This is only contrast, of course. In the Mark II, they incorporated phase detection. But here, with that A9 competency and the no blackout, you really have a pocketable camera that can double as a sports camera, which you might be scratching your head about. You may not understand who would really want that, but I can tell you, parents um, and also hobbyists that are taking the RX100 hiking, uh, if they're doing any type of birding, you can actually pull that off if the autofocus competency is there. So between 357 uh, phase detection points and 425 points of contrast, uh, detection, the autofocus system appears to have made a significant step when combined with the new algorithms for eye as well as uh, general um, autofocus tracking in real time. And the eye autofocus for the new Mark 7 is just like that found in the A9 and A6400, so that does apply to both humans and animals alike. Uh, also, there is a new single burst drive mode that can capture, get this, up to 90 frames per second. Now, of course, I'm not expecting the same quality, but that still is going to give you that creative flexibility to capture things you generally would never be able to do with the Mark VI or the Mark V. So that's another improvement. Uh, beyond that, we have uh, 4K HDR uh, capability. This is not 10-bit, remember that. But uh, we've got you know HLG, so we do have profiles for HDR, S-Log, all of that good stuff. And now that the video recording cap has been removed and the camera does not face the same overheating issues, or at least it appears not to based on what I've seen, I don't have it in hand yet, but eventually I will, 
that is going to be, in my opinion, again, as I mentioned at the top of the video, combined with the autofocus capability, or I should just say the focusing capability of this uh, new piece of tech, that is what makes it the crown jewel here. Um, add in the microphone jack and you've made a lot of people happy. I personally would have liked to have seen uh, a new battery type. We don't get that, but I don't have a real issue with that because I've got a ton of these batteries, so I'm not going to cry. Yes, it would be nice to only carry maybe two, but if I got to carry five, I will. Uh, also, something I want to point out is that we have active image stabilization in video. Now, it does come, and that's 4K, so this used to only be relegated to 1080p, and I don't shoot in 1080p, so it was a worthless thing for me. Now that we have Active Steady Shot in 4K, it's significant. Why? Well, it does crop uh, similarly to action cams, but you're actually going to leverage the quality of that sensor in a way that you just couldn't do with previous gens. Uh, now, I'm not going to say you won't need a gimbal for the Mark 7. And remember, the Mark 7 has almost the exact same form factor as the Mark 6, which was, of course, very similar to the Mark 5. But with the larger lens, of course, we did give up the ND filter, which I know a lot of you wish was still there. It unfortunately is not. There simply isn't room in this body with that lens assembly. So maybe Sony will offer uh, a you know 7A like they did with the 5A. I don't think they're going to, but you never know. I think that's what the 5A is still there for. Uh, but the ND filter, of course, you can compensate for not having one by adjusting your shutter speed. That's the easy way. It's not a perfect solution, but it's a working one. Uh, beyond that, the things that I think, again, are really the most significant and will draw a lot of people to this camera really come down to that removal of the video cap because no other camera on the market in this form factor can provide anywhere near the quality uh, that the RX100 line can in 4K for a pocketable camera. I mean, otherwise, you're looking at the RX0 series, which I kind of think is a half-baked product, and that's why you haven't seen it on my channel. Uh, eventually, if Sony sends it to me for review, that'll be one thing. And then the ability to have that 180-degree uh, tilt on the screen, which now, of course, has been incorporated into things like the A6400, that is a welcomed addition when combined with that unlimited, well, not unlimited, but no longer capped 4K video capture. Uh, this also means that when I go scuba diving, I'm going to be able uh, to just leave it on recording, not have to worry about overheating as much because if you are a diver, then you know that the RX100, as great a camera as it is, it is prone to overheating. So uh, that new uh, sensor, that stacked uh, sensor is going to be critical, I think, when it comes to heat dissipation compared to previous generations. And that with the autofocus is a game changer. Now, when we went from Gen 5 to Gen 6, we got a completely new lens. You know, we went from you know, not really having zoom capability to having it, but giving up a fixed aperture of f1.8 across the lens, which a lot of people cried about. I was not one of them because the idea of adding more focal range to a pocketable camera is a far more personal use to me because if I really care about aperture uh, being fixed, I'll bring out a fixed lens. I mean, excuse me, a prime lens is what I meant to say. Um, or something like the RX-1. Now, of course, everyone doesn't have an RX-1 or an RX-1 Mark II, but most of you out there, if you have an interchangeable lens camera, already have a prime lens. They're not expensive. Uh, of course, it depends on quality, manufacturer, all of those things come into play, but I'm not that critical about uh, the variable aperture in the RX-100 Mark VI or in the Mark VII. What I will be critical about with the Mark 7, and again, this is feedback for Sony. I'm not here to rake them through the coals. I think that they are the only company continuing to innovate, even as the number one manufacturer out there being at the top pretty much at this point. And they can do whatever they want. They still look to innovate because they know it, it's really easy to turn customers off. And at $1,200, it's difficult to really have them coming back. And I don't know that so many RX100 Mark 6 owners are going to want to upgrade. Uh, but in the Mark 7, I would have liked to have seen a new Wi-Fi chipset. That's something they did bring to the A7R Mark IV. I'm not comparing them. They are completely different animals. Uh, so, you know, one is a point-and-shoot pocketable camera, even if it has the A9 autofocusing capability, which is bonkers. But I don't expect it to have all of the uh, accoutrement of, you know, the RX, uh, excuse me, of the A7R Mark IV. So that's why I'm willing to live with the lesser battery type but I would have liked to have seen uh, better 
Wi-Fi performance. Uh, they have reincorporated uh, a time-lapse feature, so that is nice to see back in there since they did uh, get rid of Play Memories a while back, and that is something that I feel doesn't need to come back, but I would like to see something like time-lapse, so I'm glad it's built into the camera, and it should be free for what it is. Uh, also, we have portrait video now, which I think is nice. So unlike this camera or this camera, if you flip it into portrait, you're going to actually get, the, you know, the camera will recognize that you're in portrait mode. And as a result, you're going to be working with a video in post that's ready uh, for Instagram, uh, et cetera, so that you do not have to do that in post. So I think that's a very smart move. And that's Sony being aware of the market. Uh, and recognizing that vloggers love the RX100 line, so why not tailor it even more? And I think that's why we finally got a microphone input jack. Uh, of course, there is nowhere on the body to mount a microphone, so you're going to end up using uh, either a cage for your new RX100 Mark 7 or one of the uh, brackets that mounts at the tripod mount and gives you essentially a cold shoe for your microphone, whether we're talking about something I'm using now, like the Wireless Go or the Rode Video Micro, whatever your personal preference is in external audio, you'll have the ability. It does, however, in my opinion, and this is why I've never been a stickler about having that built-in mic, it does take away from the fact that this is a completely pocketable, portable um, beast in terms of still and video capability. So with all these new features, we have an even more competent RX100 but with that introduction of the uh, mic jack, um, excuse me, on this side, I went to the wrong side, a little inverted here with the video, you are essentially forfeiting that form factor, but I'd always rather have the option. So I, I have nothing negative to say about the inclusion of the mic jack. I think people are celebrating that more than the other features, which I think is completely backwards. Uh, I think the real star of the show here is the autofocus system and the video recording cap being lifted and the overheating issue not resolved, but nowhere near as problematic as we had with any RX100 uh, before it. So that I think is the biggest success here. And uh, beyond that, again, the Wi-Fi chipset, I would have liked to have seen an improvement. The fact that we're still dealing with a micro USB port on here for charging in the Mark 7 is another thing I don't take issue with, but Sony at 1200 US dollars Let's do this. You've started to move to Type-C on all of your Pro Series cameras. It's time to make that same transition with the RX100. I know that Sony figures, the majority of users out there picking this up are Apple users or people that aren't necessarily tech savvy. So this is a corner they can cut. And I'm not saying Type-C means you're tech savvy. It really does not. Maybe it did, you know, three years ago, but today it's a standard. And when the majority of my devices are Type-C, which means I bring one charger to rule them all, or two of the same charger, you get my drift, it's time for Type-C to be on the RX100. So that is my own personal request. If you don't change the battery, I won't cry at night. I'm not gonna cry at night about not having Type-C, but there's just something that rubs me incredibly the wrong way about dropping $1,200 on a best-in-class uh, pocketable point-and-shoot camera that is a jack-of-all-trades that simply does not have a Type-C port. Like, why would that be the one device I still need to carry a micro USB uh, cable for? Now, I never carry a micro USB cable, so that's why it's not a game changer for me. I bring a battery charger. But I just, there is something obviously off about still having micro USB in 2019 when it's been abandoned by virtually every manufacturer on the market in favor of Type-C. Uh, so we're not even talking about costs being an issue here or adoption. It's clear that Sony just, this is one of the areas that they're cutting corners, much like the Wi-Fi chipset. Uh, the battery type, again, I come back to because I don't even look at that necessarily as a cost cutting uh, measure because you've got a form factor that if they were to make the battery any larger, I mean, the whole body, the build is off kilter. Uh, it's, it's thrown out of whack. And that's why we don't have um, you know, a lot of things that people are looking for, like a hot shoe, you do not have uh, the ND filter anymore. It's because it's all about that give and take of what you can cram into a camera this small. And there are a lot of people out there who are willing to concede, ah, make it a little larger. I don't want it to be larger. I mean, I think it's amazing that they gave us a bigger lens and barely in increased the size of the camera. And if that was the trade-off for losing the ND filter, I welcomed it. I love it. 
So I'm not looking to make this camera any bigger. I think it's already a little brick for what it's capable of. Uh, and if I want something larger, that's where Sony's mirrorless cameras come into play and I leave the RX lineup or I embrace an RX10. And I'm really looking forward to the, the Mark V uh, hitting hopefully soon. I'm hoping that's gonna be announced in the next week. I mean, summertime is when Sony kind of blesses us all before fall comes around. Uh, so we have that ability to get that foliage with all of their new RX and of course the new A7R Mark IV cameras. So I think there's a lot to like here. Again, um, are, is the camera perfect? Absolutely not. But from what I see, it just checks more boxes that we didn't even have before in the RX100 world. And I only see a benefit pretty much across the board. Uh, so while it's not a radical redesign, it's not like going from five to six where we got a brand new lens, we are getting a new sensor. We are getting a very much enhanced autofocus system. And there's a lot to be said for that. Uh, but again, that video cap being removed, I think is more significant than the microphone input jack. Um, and I think that we now are looking at the most complete RX100 ever made, which is logical. Uh, so not as controversial as the Mark VI because a lot of people were pissed off that we gave up the ND filter uh, and that we went to a variable aperture. But I think here, Sony's made it clear by introducing a camera that builds off of this, that the market, in spite of all of those complaints, welcomed the RX100 Mark VI, and it should have. It was, in my opinion, the best RX100 ever made, and now the Mark VII looks to easily top that without changing the game, but polishing and refining the RX100 into a camera that, even though no generation is perfect, it's as close as we've come. So even though there's no 4K at 60p, I didn't expect that. Even though there's no 10 bit, I didn't expect that. Even though we don't get a new battery, I didn't expect that. In fact, I didn't even expect the microphone input jack because God knows people have been bitching about getting that for years. But clearly Sony does still listen. They've incorporated, even if it's a little bit unruly. But the key enhancements are the ones that are necessary in my mind. And that's, for again, for everyone who's saying why A9 performance, because they can make it happen. And if you can do it, why wouldn't you offer it? After all, if you're selling a pocketable point and shoot camera for 1200 and you wanna make sure that Canon and Nikon, Canon being the only one who really can compete, Panasonic still does a good job, but they're not in the class of uh, Sony's cameras uh, when it comes to the RX standard. Why wouldn't you put the best that you possibly can into the camera? And I think they have. Uh, so impressive without any hesitation. My biggest gripe is really the micro uh, you know, the, the micro uh, port still being there and not abandoning types, you know, not, excuse me, taking on type C. I mean, micro uh, USB should be gone. I mean, I literally do not have another device anymore that will depend on a micro USB uh, connection. And of course, when I get the RX100 Mark VII uh, for review or to keep, likely to keep, in spite of getting it for review from Sony at some point, I'm probably still, you know, just going to be using my dedicated charger. I want to see fast charging for these cameras. If that means a new battery type, but the same form factor, let's do it, Sony. So that's where I would want a new battery type um, just for fast charging. I think these are things we need to see start to happen. But overall, love everything about this new offering. Not upset with the price point. This camera proved that the price point is viable. And the fact that they're building off it proves that they didn't have a problem with selling the RX100 Mark VI at 1200 US. Now, the good news here at my almost 19 minute mark is that these cameras are going to become less expensive. So if you really want an RX100, you just got more options at a lower price point because this has to go down in price. This doesn't necessarily, but it likely will. I mean, the Mark V-A is already sitting at 900. It probably won't go down that much, but inherently all of the previous generations will become more affordable. And if you didn't know this about Sony, all of the RX 100s are still alive, even the very first gen. And I have covered every single one and they're all great cameras, but they all have different capabilities. I mean, Mark one to three, fairly similar capabilities. Mark, you know, four and up, 4K is introduced. Um, the EVF takes a big step in the right direction. So being built in. So, and also we gain the 180 degree flipping screen for uh, self portrait mode. And of course now a bona fide vlogging video camera, which when they introduced the little 
um, you know, tripod control arm accessory that I covered last year, I thought for sure we were gonna we were going to lose the 4K video cap. Of course, we didn't, but now we finally have. So I know I've repeated that several times, but it is so significant because this is the type of camera that can render action cams obsolete, even if it's not water resistant or proof to any degree. You can easily get an enclosure and run with it. And uh, now with that active steady shot in 4K, you, you know, you'll still need a gimbal, but you'll need one far less often, even with the crop factor taken into account. I mean, what do you think action cameras do to begin with? Why do you think Sony has pretty much left the action camera game? I'd like to see them make a new offering, but they seem to be fixated on the RX0, again, which I consider like an experimental camera that is far from fitting any single individual's uh, use since it still doesn't even have continuous autofocus. But a lot to like here. Hope you guys enjoyed the preview, guys and gals, of course. Uh, any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.